Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Redolescence. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate your time and your viewership. And today I'm gonna be reviewing a fragrance that I smelled many, many, many years ago. I recently had the opportunity to acquire a bottle and I'm so happy I did. And this one is from the brand Christensen New York. I'm very excited to give you my thoughts on this fragrance, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin my fragrance review of Christians in New York, and I tell you all about this fragrance, what other fragrance I think it smells like, how it smells, how it performs on my skin, so on and so forth, I do wanna mention that if you are a fan of fragrance-related content, if you like fragrance reviews just like this, but also top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxings, and more, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. And also while you're at it, if you can give this video a thumbs up, it would really mean a lot to me. So this is a fragrance that I originally sampled, I wanna say back in like 2013 or 2014, it was actually when Chad from A Gentleman's Journey, a very good friend of mine, he was actually visiting the States and he gave me a 10 ml decant of this fragrance and I immediately fell in love with it. This is a mossy, musky, lavender sort of a scent. It's a beautiful fougere fragrance and it just smelled so classy, so dressed up, so elegant and it also reminded me of one of my favorite fragrances and this also smells like another designer fragrance which is discontinued now. A lot of people are having a really hard time finding it. So the perfumer for this one is Pierre Constantin Gueros. He has done tons of fragrances, fragrances for Carolina Herrera, Inicio Parfum Privé, the, his resume is quite extensive. If you have the opportunity, please check it out. But in today's episode, I'm very excited to be giving you my thoughts on this awesome creation of his from 2010 Christians in New York. Before I talk to you about the smell, let's take a quick look at the presentation. So right in the opening of this fragrance, you are going to get this musky, smooth lavender note. It's a very natural and realistic sort of a lavender. And it's a lavender that I recall smelling in fragrances like MDCI Parfum Invasion Barbar. It also smells a lot like 1725 Casanova by um, Histoire de Parfum. And that is a very sentimental fragrance for me because that's the fragrance that I was wearing when my daughter was born. And so whenever I smell this, you know, it kind of epitomizes what a man should be like, you know, a gentleman, a father, just somebody who's very responsible. And that's how I felt that day. It was one of the proudest moments of my life. And so I pick up on some spices in here. They're very gentle, very delicate, nothing over the top. It's really the lavender and the musk that are kind of giving it that interplay in the heart that I'm really enjoying. You have a little bit of a fruity vibe in the opening, a little bit of fig actually, a little bit of orange as well. And then you have that oak moss quality in the base that really sort of serves to round things out while also lending a few extra hours of longevity to the composition. So. The fragrance that this one is actually reminding me of is By Man by Dolce Gabbana. That's the one that came in the cylindrical bottle. I think it kind of had like a zebra stripe pattern on it. I've never owned a bottle of it. I have a sample of it and I do visit it and revisit it from time to time just to sort of remind myself what it smells like. And I know there's like a dedicated fan base for that fragrance out there. And on some blogs online, yes, people actually do go as far as comparing this fragrance to by For Men by Dolce Gabbana. And I have to say, they are really, really, really close. If you miss By Man by Dolce Gabbana and you're just yearning to get that DNA again, look no further, I should say, smell no further than Christians in New York because this really, really is a close fragrance. And uh, just the quality of the lavender, it's a little powdery, it's a little spicy, but like I said, very gently spiced. You are going to get that clean musky vibe that's in here. There's a little bit of vetiver in here as well, and I think that that's sort of contributing to that clean, earthy sensation that you're gonna get in the base. It's not like one of those aggressive varieties of vetiver that are on the market. This one is very smooth, very clean, very polished, and very elegant. At 
at the same time. So this fragrance, while it does convey a bit of a gentlemanly quality, I can also see it being very unisex as well because lavender is a note that I've smelled in a lot of women's perfumes as well, but I think it's a connection that I'm making to not only Casanova by Histoire de Parfum, but also by For Men by Dolce Gabbana that makes me feel like this leans a little bit more masculine than feminine, but this is an awesome fragrance. I have a lot of favorite lavender scents, like I said, 1725. Also, Dan Naughton created his own brand, Naughton & Wilson. His initial release, Gravitas, is an amazing lavender-based fragrance as well, and Guerlain has a few lavenders that I really enjoy by Christensen, New York. This is an awesome lavender-based fragrance, especially if you're looking for something really grown up, but sexy, educated, something very smart smelling, and something just very well put together. Please check this fragrance out. I happen to really love this one. And of course, my Tenemel decant that I acquired many years ago, it's safe to say that it's completely empty now. So happy that I finally have a bottle in my collection. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, it does smell a lot like Buy for Men by Dolce Gabbana, but then that fragrance also smells like 17 25 Casanova by Histoire de Parfum. So I'm given to understand that if you're using a certain combination of notes, you're just going to create this sort of olfactory blue blueprint, if you will, that might remind you of some other fragrances out there. The longevity of this fragrance is awesome. You can get about six to seven hours on your skin, sometimes pushing that eight hour boundary. In terms of the projection, it radiated within an arm's length for the first hour and a half to two hours of application. It wasn't really a about that until about the four hour mark that it started to sit within an elbow's length and right around that seven hour mark I feel like it completely went away on skin at least if you put it on your clothing I'm sure it's going to last for a very long time much longer than seven hours in terms of the versatility it's a little masculine leaning but I can see a confident woman wearing this one as well I think this one can be worn all year round whenever I think of lavender or even some floral fragrances I think of the springtime or the summertime but this has some base heavy and ingredients in it as well that make me say you know what you can wear this one in the winter time as well you can wear this one casually because the price tag is very very fair but it sort of conveys this element of formality so I would prefer to wear this one when I'm dressed up in a shirt and tie or suit and tie when I really want to give off my best impression and then in, in terms of the presentation I think it's a very simple presentation cardboard box plastic cap but overall I think it really lends to keep the price down as much as possible and to make this an accessible luxury product for the average consumer out there. So my final verdict on Christensen New York is if you're in the market for a lavender-based fragrance, if you miss Dolce Gabbana Buy for Men, which is now discontinued, if you like fragrances like 1725 Casanova, Invasion Barbar by Parfum MDCI, or even Gravitas by Naughton and Wilson, you should definitely check this fragrance out as it does fall within that same genre of perfumes I think this is a beautiful barbershop, sort of a lavender fougere fragrance and one that, again, I'm very happy to have in my collection and in my possession. I can see myself wearing this one a lot. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you took something of value from this review. That was my fragrance review of Christensen New York. If you own or have tried this fragrance, which maybe you have, it's been around for 11 years now, leave a comment down below. If you took something of value from this video, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. Once again, if you can give this video a thumbs up as well, it would really mean a lot to me. Thanks again for watching. Love you all. We'll see you very soon. Bye.